The following video is brought to you by Yellow Jacket. Visit yellowjacket.com to find out why Yellow Jacket is the industry standard in refrigerant hoses, tools, manifolds, and vacuum pumps, and many other tools. Okay, we've had requests to see some old units. Well, this is pretty old. Got the uh, homemade cage because the plastic's broke. This is either an old Whirlpool or an old Johnson. Doesn't really matter, same thing. Uh, and a lot of guys, another thing I want to point out while I'm thinking about it, people say, what do you do for a basic service call? What kind of bag do you carry? Look guys, I didn't got to where I'm tired of doing the bag switching thing. I carry one bag that holds all my shit. When I'm coming on a basic service call, there's my bag. I bring my light, my meter, pair of strippers because I can use these as pliers, strippers, whatever. And the eight and one does five sixteenths and quarter inch. And then that's the valve core tool. I was using it for that earlier. And on this end it does flat and fill up. So I just put that in my hand and run. Now the inside's running. The complaint is that the unit is running constantly inside, or he, he thought the outside was running too. So we're gonna give it a look. Contactor's not pulled in. There's no float switch inside. <laughs> Pressure switch has got us locked out. It's got an external high pressure switch. All right, let me do some investigating and I'll show y'all. I'm gonna check for 24 volts where my stat wires are, where they come in, and we don't have it. Hmm. All right, let me go inside and see why. All right, let's try this again. The customer wouldn't let me in the house. I told him I need to turn the thermostat on, and he said, the thermostat's on, thermostat's on. Uh, but he had it in the on position, not in cooling. Okay, I heard it come on inside, but it was off. I think that pressure switch is cutting it out. Let me get some gauges. Okay, when I got back with my gauges, it was off again, which tells me that that pressure switch is cutting it off. And that's a high pressure switch, so that's not good. I got the gauges hooked up to see there's the compressor. I don't see a low pressure switch. Now we got 18 and a half amps. We got about 75 pounds of suction, almost 400 pounds of head. The switch was cutting out at 400. I removed a little bit of gas to keep the head pressure under 400. I'm very clear. I'm going to take a temperature reading on each side of that dryer over there, see if that dryer is plugged up. There's no TXV inside, it's a piston. I don't think that's going to be the issue. Definitely got a restriction somewhere. Either that or this compressor just is about to shit the bed. Alright, I went and got a pipe clamp off my S Man because it'll hook to my meter. Going into the dryer, 113, 114 degrees, 115. That's hot. I mean, I got this damn thing sitting right under 400. I'm talking about 375. Oh, 
120 degrees going into that drive. Deadly climb. Good at all. Oh, wait, we're coming back up. I think we got up to 124. on the other side. That, that, that son bitch is hot on that, on, the, on that side of the car. We're gonna go back to the other side again. Now it's hotter on that side. That don't make no damn sense. Okay, so here's what we got. We're given a proposal to change this outdoor unit. The dryer's restricted. Uh, pumping this thing down, changing out the dryer. Why in God's name would you do that? on something like this because I know somebody will say you know why don't you just change the dryer blah 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 well that's not what I want to do and that's not what my boss wants to do uh, this unit is has done its time I mean I've got the head pressure under 400 that controller that head pressure or, or high pressure switch is made for 400 pounds I've got it under that I can't drop it any lower because then my suction is going to drop too low um, you can see 139 on that side of the dryer Then it drops down to about 132, 131. But I mean, why would you, why, you know, because I know somebody will say, well, you could have done this, 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 this. Why would you want to put any effort into a machine like this? This machine is, is 30 years old. It's just not worth it. And, you know, like my boss said, he's been babysitting this unit for years. So we're going to replace it. We're gonna, I mean, we've got to give a quote. But there, I mean, this is one of his good accounts. They'll do it. If I'm the one that changes it, I'll I'll film it. But I don't. I can't promise that I will be the one to come back and change it. So, but this is the best that I can do for him right now. I just got to keep that head pressure under 400. See, there's the other side of the dryer. It drops down to 131. So that's like an eight degree split. That, there's definitely something wrong with that dryer. These were good units. And I mean, it's 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 still working. And if we change the dryer, yeah, I mean, it would probably be okay. But I mean, why, why do that? All right, guys, well, we're driving away from that old Whirlpool, Johnson, whatever it was. You know, I'm sure we'll get some comments on here. Oh, you didn't check superheat, subcooling, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know what? That is the last thing that I'm worried about on that old piece of shit is going through all that. You know, there's a time where you just have to, like for that guy, I wasn't going to leave him without air. So I did the best that I could. I took a little bit more gas out 
I was able to drop the head pressure to 350, which caused my suction to drop to about 65, 66. I didn't really like that a whole lot, but I wanted to get that head pressure down. I went inside, took some temperature readings. I mean, honestly, it was, I mean, it, it was okay. I mean, it wasn't cooling that good, but it was, it was okay. It was cooling. But we'll be here within the next day or two. It, well, it won't be tomorrow because I already talked to the, to the boss and he said that it can't be tomorrow. So that's why he asked me to, you know, do the best I could to keep him going, which I did. But there's a time where, you know, you, I mean, like, you know, would you, would, would you go stick an eye connect on that old unit? No. I mean, not even the field piece. I mean, I didn't even use my S-Mans. I just used my old analogs. Yes, I can still do this job with analogs. Fine. Sometimes I enjoy doing it that way. It's, you know, I've, here lately, if it's been R22, I, that's what that's all I've been using is my analogs. So, you know, I'm not going to go through the trouble of checking all that on that thing. I mean, that thing needs to be replaced. I mean, yeah, it's the dryer that's restricted, but the unit needs to be replaced too. I mean, why would you want to go and replace a dryer, you know, pump the unit down and, you know, charge the customer all this money to pump down and all that, replace the dryer, you got your torches out anyway, you might as well replace the damn unit because that thing is old. And now, there's a 2011 air handler in there. Now, when he replaced the air handler, he said, hey, we need to change the outdoor unit, and they wouldn't. They said, no, this is one of our... Uh, property management companies that we do work for. They said, no, let's leave it alone. Okay. So, of course, uh, the boss ran a new liquid line because he had a quarter-inch liquid line, so he ran a three-eighths liquid line. He put a filter dryer in the system. He did all that right. But, you know, they 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 were warned and told. But the bottom line is, is that the dryer is restricted. It's not worth just putting a dryer. If we're going to open the system up, we need to go ahead and replace the condenser. And that's what we're going to do. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate the support. And we'll see you guys on the next one.